Here then the sad remains of my little EDF conversion, seen here flying in happier days. The great day has come then to rebuild my EDF. I still have the original unit. I've reprinted the support in a fetching red colour so it doesn't show the blood. And I've replaced the original speed controller which was somewhat bent uh, with a little turnergy. These are no longer available but uh, a quality ESC in my opinion. I'll match it all with the type of battery that I used as well, a graphene 1.3. And I'm very keen these days on the ELRS or Express LRS receivers. This five channel example will do fine. And it also has one of my favorite things, the telemetry for the onboard battery voltage. This is still part of the remains of the uh, original version. I think I'll try a different arrangement with the elevator. We'll see how that works out. And I'll be making the carbon tube longer to pass into the fuselage as clearly that was <laughs> where a break occurred. So carbon rods there, we're good to go. Let's crack on then and uh, throughout the build, I won't bore you with all of it, but I will show you things that I'm doing differently and that will be of interest. Here then is the first of my new innovations. I got this idea from a guy in the little Kmart and other small phone gliders Facebook page, and I'll leave a link to that down in the description. The guy's name was Willem Odendal, if I pronounce that correctly, and uh, I thought it was quite a neat idea. One of the things that is a problem is obviously gouging out the channel for the carbon rod to sit in and I don't think that this process is going to cause any more damage than that and in fact in my experience when uh, using Yoohoo Pour the glue joint is actually much stronger than the foam so I think we're probably gaining some strength rather than losing it and certainly with the parts exposed, cutting a channel for the carbon rod and passing servo cables and such like through should be a breeze. I'll uh, speed up the rest of the video to uh, prevent you from getting bored. Next I'm going to use my old Weller soldering iron, comes with this sort of tip and frankly as a soldering iron it's pretty useless. You can see the red on there, it's what I use to gouge out the hole for the, the battery in the front. But with a bit of imagination and some copper wire you can create pretty much any shape you like. In this case a little coil shape bit of Paxilin board on there to space it off and we'll see if we can put a nice channel along here. Taking our five millimeter rod then. And that will sit quite nicely in there. Job done. Things are taking shape now. What I've elected to do is to straighten the wing. And I tried before on another attempt to use the hot towel method and an iron to flatten these out, but it always just popped back up again within a few hours. So I've elected this time to make a cut in the wing. I didn't cut all the way through just enough to open it up and uh, put some epoxy glue and then filler on the top there to tidy that up. The strength being provided by the carbon spar which I've put in there as well. Also I've elected to put the ailerons at the end of the wings there to hopefully provide a little more control. Combined with the flat wing that should be quite interesting. I 
just loosely pinned the bottom on there because I haven't finished with the insides. As I mentioned, I've uh, changed the way the elevator is constructed, cutting out the sort of hump in the, in the middle and putting in some Depron to cover up that gap and a 3 mil carbon spar to tie the whole thing together. Nicked a little bit out of the tail there. I believe that should be enough throw. We will find out. That's where we are then at the moment. I've also done a rough balance, putting the components roughly on the model and trying to balance it. The carbon spar that I've put in is 65 mil back, which is a little behind the C of G. So I'm going for somewhere just ahead of that carbon spar as my start off C G point. We'll see how that works out as well. I've made up some extension leads for the servos that will be controlling the ailerons up there. And I've actually pulled out of the remains of my old unit the servo for the elevator control. In a good position now then to not quite fix the wing in place yet, but to place the servos in there and work out a way. I need an extra bit of space here for the receiver and a channel to take the servo leads from the aileron servos, the rudder and the speed controller, which is going to be underneath the wing on the side there. Watch this space. Another rough and ready check on the C of G then with the components just hanging on there. It's set, as I said, just forward of the spar that I put in the bottom. At the moment it appears to be just a little tail heavy. Somewhere around there looks about right. Um, the only purpose for this test really is to make sure that we're not wildly out of kilter as the canopy drops off, but I've got some leeway with moving the battery around and other things. So as I said, it's just a, a rough and ready check that we're not too far out of the ballpark. Here we are then, virtually complete. There's just a few things I need to do before the maiden flight. Put some tape on the hinges and such like, but I thought I'd just wrap the video up by showing you how it all went together in the end. So I have my ELRS receiver in there. Ailerons are on separate channels. I have a five channel receiver. So one aileron is on channel one, the other on channel five. That means I didn't have to use a Y lead, which saves space. And interestingly, if it survives the first couple of flights, I can then mess around with things like maybe spoilerons or flapperons. I get the impression that um, this might come in quite hot, so we shall see. If we take a look under the hood, let me just disconnect the battery pack. I have a little bit of wiggle room with the battery pack there. That's wedged in there quite nicely. You can see my receiver down underneath there. The elevator servo cable went up this side of the carbon tube that I put in earlier. The aileron leads go under and pop out. Pop out as you can hopefully see at the top there. Not overly impressed by my installation of the speed controller and motor. I'm sure there's probably a better way of doing that. Again, another hole through for the cables there. But I couldn't really think of uh, anything better than that. On the previous version, the speed controller was inside the fuselage and was tending to overheat. I thought this would be a better arrangement. If you have any better ideas, please let me know in the comments. Other than that then, I think we're pretty much good to go. We'll see you for the maiden flight.